All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like, I would like to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. I also would like to give double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do rule well through the Holy Spirit. And I want to say peace, blessings, and salutations as always that are unto you elect, scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, and I'm coming to you all with another lesson, which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And Lord willing, this lesson here will be edifying to the flock. A few days ago, I was um, when I was at work, I was checking out a lesson that was done by the beloved Apostle Gabar. And uh, the lesson title is, um, and just bear with me one second, this isn't in transit, but I got it pulled up right here. But the title of his lesson, and it was about three days ago, but it says, The True Prophets Wore Rough Garments to match their rough lives and in that lesson he's doing a response to some um to some uh low level guy looks like he's from the um isubk and he's just going on a rant because that's really all you hear when you do listen to guys of the isubk for the most of the part you'll hear more so rants than anything you know now you'll hear some history broke down here and there and you know i'm not going to tell you that those guys don't know history or nothing like that because those guys definitely know um, their fair share of history and such but when it comes to the weightier matters of the scriptures which are really simple weightier but yet simple but it goes over their heads and the reason why it goes over their heads is because the spirit of Yahweh Shai or the breath is not within these brothers it's not within these guys you know and that's uh, alongside um, a lot of other uh, individuals as well but you heard some uh, reprobate statement that individual said pertaining to uh, the lesson the Apostle Kabar did. And that individual was talking about how the prophets of the Lord are supposed to be pretty much have a, a clean outward look. And they're not supposed to look like bums and have bum garments and such. And he didn't say GMS, but you knew he was alluding to GMS starting with the apostles on down. And the reason why we know this is because we're the only camp within the world of Israel that gets talked about for our our unique look you know and our unique look goes into the type of garments that we have you know we don't have lineups and the scriptures prohibit us to get lineups it doesn't it tells us not to get lineups you know so the Lord's not with getting lineups but you know we we try to keep the law to the best of our ability and out of that we make sure that we don't round the corners of our head nor uh, mar the corners of our beards just as the law states, you know, and as much as you see a lot of guys that call themselves Israelites and as much as they like to push this, uh, the, the law and how salvation comes through the law within the same breath, these guys don't do a good job at keeping the same laws that they're hell bent about. OK, hold on one sec. Man, yo, that's, that's lucky, y'all. I'm doing this in transit. I had to. Y'all heard my phone just ring, and as I'm driving, there was there was somebody driving on the opposite side of the highway. Like uh, the spirits that are on these people are unlike any other. Holy moly, man! Why do y'all about shit me? How was shy? But um, but you know, nevertheless, going back to it, you know, generally speaking, um, just going to where I left off at, pertaining to the Holy Spirit. As we get closer to the, and you know, the Spirit always speaks expressly. Like that was an example right there. How the Lord's Spirit only resides in a few people especially here within these last days but going back into the topic the guy from the isubk ended up talking about you know the rough tattered garments and how the prophets aren't supposed to look like that you know and um and that guy obviously as out of all the other times i mean they go off on ample things you know but um the apostle bar did a lesson talking about that you know and in that lesson he may mention that the prophets are here within these last days to reap their reward. And that's more so the aspect of that lesson that I do want to talk about how the Lord has us here in these last days to reap the reward that we've been waiting for. All right. And um, we believe through the Holy Spirit that we are those spirits that have returned. 
or at least we hope that there were those righteous spirits that we return, we return, you know, that return, which is why we always say, you know, Lord, we're the world of the elect, because we don't ever assume it. But if we are of the elect, and that means that in our previous lives, countless after countless times, we've had to suffer, all right, as we endured the lot of a prophet, all right, and that suffering, part of that comes with being a, an affliction, you know, going through things, all right, and in the midst of that, we never truly been separated from the love of Hamashiach, even though we did fall away for a period of time, even though we did go off, it was still within the Lord's good graces to allow us, um, good graces, excuse me, to allow us to return unto the Lord, all right, it was always within his good graces to allow us to return to the Lord, all right, just as you read it in the book of Baruch, the fourth chapter, seeing how far we've fallen, we must return to the Lord 10 times more, just as the scriptures state. And those that are fulfilling the lots of the prophets would for def would definitely, without a, last, without a shadow of a doubt, in these last days, excuse me, I'm a little tongue twisted right now, you know, but without the shadow of a doubt, the prophets are here back in these last days, fulfilling their roles and seeking the Lord 10 times more, just as the scriptures state. All right, you can read it here in the book of Hosea, the fifth chapter. Let's read this here in the book of Hosea, the fifth chapter. Salaki, one sec. In the 15th verse is really the key point. But it says, all right, um, and this is what took place with us being Israelites. There was a point of time where the Lord stopped dealing with us as a nation of people. But still, the Lord still had his elect here in the earth to fulfill their portions. That way, eventually, repentance will come into play where the Lord would eventually return back unto us, just as the prophecies do declare. But when you read this in Hosea, the fifth chapter in verse 15, it says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense all right so the scripture right here doesn't say if they acknowledge their offense no the scripture right here says the lord will go into his place meaning he will take his spirit away from us for the time being until we eventually repent where he returns back unto us all right just as the scriptures say till they acknowledge their offense and you can read the prophecies per uh, pertaining to what the israelites would be doing in the last days and how they would be we would be acknowledging our offense. And you can read about that prophecy in the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, where it said that we would even be scattered to the uttermost parts of heavens. Thence will the Lord scatter thee, and thence will also the Lord fetch thee, as the scripture is written. All right, so the places we've been scattered at is also where we would acknowledge our offense, because the scriptures say that we would return unto the Lord as we experience captivity. All right, so it says till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face and their affliction they will seek me early all right and we are definitely especially in these last days being afflicted all right and as we've been in past incarnations in this planet earth we've we've expected the reward of the kingdom all right we always sought the kingdom all right even when we were slaves back in the upbringing of america you know some of us were singing those Negro spiritual swing down, sw uh, swing chariot. I'm sorry, swing, uh, swing down, swing low, sweet chariot. Come forth and carry us home. Like you know, that's a Negro spiritual. And within that Negro spiritual, even though we fell off and really didn't know who we were like that, but we still sought the Lord and we're still seeking repentance. All right, and you also read it in the book of uh, Revelation, the sixth chapter, where the scriptures talks about. Excuse me, one sec. Got to be a little careful on these roads. These people drive crazy out here in the DF dub, you know. But nevertheless, when you read it in Revelation, the sixth chapter, and it talks about those horses, and it says, in the time of one of those horses, it says they would try to destroy the oil and the wine, but they wouldn't be able to. All right. Matter of fact, let's go in and get that as well in Revelation chapter six. All right. The scriptures say to hurt not the oil nor the wine 
Let's bring this out in Revelation, the sixth chapter. And you can read about Revelation chapter six, and this is where you get the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which Esau's breakdown is completely off when you read this. All right, when you read this, a face value with Christianity's breakdown, they'll tell you that each of these four horsemen are going to come. You know, when these four horsemen have significant roles within the current state of the earth. All right, and this particular horse right here is going into the black horse, which this black horse represents slavery. All right, and us being the Israelites have experienced slavery our whole upbringing here within America. All right, and on top of that, we're still slaves under Esau's system, and he's getting ready to bring a lot more draconian, draconian measures and rules where he's going to be forced to, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Set up a coup against the Israelites. All right, I'd rather say not a coup, but more so an insurrection. You can read about that insurrection in 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. All right, so yeah, that's most definitely, without a doubt, Esau is going to bring those clamps even more. All right, and fulfill his tab as being the devil that he is by wanting to rain snares in hell upon you Israelites. And most of our people do deserve what's getting ready to come down the pipe. They've rebelled. They've persecuted the elect, the prophets. They've slandered. They've lied. They've bore false witness. They've accused. And they've never repented from those acts. So even though the Lord is going to bring Esau down and this insurrection is going to come against the Israelites, you're going to have the elect that's going to be taken care of, even though the scriptures do say some of us will be cast into prison, which is a form of bondage and slavery. But you have the masses of Israelites that will die off within that insurrection as the scriptures do talk about Jacob's trouble. But nevertheless, going into the scripture, us being the Israelites, especially here within these last days, have experienced an abundance of slavery. But according to the scriptures, there is a reward that's going to come for the countless pain and suffering that we've endured. There's a reward that's going to come. All right. So when you read this in Revelation chapter six, verse six, it says, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And that's just ultimately going into the um, hyper inflation that's getting ready to take place. All right. And when you continue, it says, and see that hurt, not the oil, nor the wine. And this oil and this wine represents this knowledge and this truth. And our forefathers, have, they've been in slavery, had endured suffering, but through all the pain and suffering and tribulation, you were still birthed out of that. Which means that the Lord had a vessel still to send his spirit onto. That way his word will be brought out here within these last days. So you had our ancestors in Babylon and other various parts of the earth, but especially here in Babylon, where we've endured grave suffering. And we worse of those ancestors that was here during World War One, during World War Two. All right. In the Nat King era, <laughs> you know, I said Nat King, excuse me, with well, that too. You know what I'm saying? But I meant to say the Nat Turner era, not the Nat King, excuse me, the Nat Turner era. Now, we might not have been here during Nat King. That wasn't too long ago. But I'm talking about Nat Turner, which is in the uh, early 1800s. Some of us was there, you know, and just as. The prophets back then were waiting on that reward then. We're waiting on that reward right now. But the beautiful part about that is that reward is getting ready to come. The Lord is getting ready to bless his servants that endured greatly. All uh, right. That endured great tribulation, suffering, struggles. All for the name of Yahweh Shai's sake. All right. And the water Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai for that breath, man. You know, because without that breath, we wouldn't be anything. We wouldn't be nothing. And we wouldn't be motivated with the drive to continue to press forward, even though we are the off scrying of the earth. Okay. Now I'm going to read this here in the book of uh, Revelation, the 11th chapter. And I'm going to read verse 18 because this is what we've longed for. This is what we've wanted for so long. All right. You had that guy that said the prophets didn't wear rough garments, man. You got to be kidding me. That dude is a complete asshole for saying that. You know, he discredited this whole chapter in Revelation, the 11th chapter, the beginning of it tells you that we would be in poor state as we're here in captivity. And you got a nigga wearing all black, hot than a motherfucker, sweating, telling you that your ass need to put on a smooth garment when there is not. That's not scripturally sound. 
All right. I, hey, when I have a dope garment, I can't wait because I, I, the dope garment that I have, I want it. I want it when your shot gives me that crown. Lord willing, we endure until the end. But that's when I'll take the flashy garment. For right now, I'm good with the with the with the tattered green garment that I have right now. I'm good with that. All right, because it represents humility, and it's a constant reminder that we don't have it. All right, and we don't need tattered garments just to see that we don't have it. But that's part of the humiliation that the Lord wanted to put us through. All right, He put us through a state of humiliation. That way, we would remain humble. But you see, that's clearly a lost art within the world of Israel. Now let's jump back to Revelation chapter eleven, verse eighteen. This is what we want right here. All right, I don't, I don't care about a flashy garment right now. This is, I'd rather take my crown and my and my new body and my new garment when Yahweh Shai places that crown on my head because that's when that reward's coming. I'd rather have that when I get my reward. All right, but we got to endure until the end before that comes. But this is Revelation chapter eleven verse eighteen, and it says, "The nations were angry." And thy wrath is come. And we're in the time right now where that the Lord's wrath has clearly come. And there's a lot more that's getting ready to transpire here. Okay? We've dealt with a few uh, outages this past month. People were uh, stranded at airports. You know, it's a lot that's going on right now. And there's more heavier things that's getting ready to transpire. You understand? But these things have to happen in order for us to receive that reward that the Lord promised us according to the scriptures and according to biblical uh, biblical prophecy so let's get back to it and it says in the times of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give thy reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear the name of the Salakia and fear thy name small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroyed the earth so in the midst of us receiving our reward the Lord is at the same time simultaneously going to destroy those that destroyed the earth. All right. Just as the scriptures all say, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them and woe be unto the heavens of the earth and those that dwell within it. For Satan shall come down having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. All right. So in the midst of our rejoicing, all right, there's reward that's going to come for that. All right. And just as we receive our reward, there's going to be punishments and plagues and judgments that are going to take place on the earth because they destroyed the fastens of the earth. And that starts with Esau, Edom. But you even have the nations that are here. All right. Which the beginning of the verse says, and the nations were angry. But you have the nations that were here that took part of that. And even the wicked of our own people that also played a huge part in the bringing down of the prophets. So part of the reward is also seeing the fall of our enemies who are the uh, who are Israelites as well. All right. Well, who are outwardly Israelites, but within they're for damn sure not Israelites. These guys got the spirit of Edomites on them. And when I say that, I'm not saying that they're actually Edomites. They're Israelites, but I'm just saying they act like Edomites. Just as Yahweh Shai said in John 8 and 44, year of your father, the devil. All right. So this is what we're waiting for. So when it comes to a, a flashy garment, you know, with the with the uh, knuckle braces and then, you know, looking like the ancient israelite and such man I, I'm, I'm good what we got right now i'm fine with my dingy wrinkled garment i'm cool with that because it's a reminder that we don't have it it's a reminder that we do got to remain humble okay it's a reminder of that it's a reminder that we do still need salvation and that's what the um, humility of our garments represent it represents humility you know it represents that we don't have it all right and it, again it represents that we need salvation just as you read in the book of uh, Revelation 11, the beginning of the chapter, it talks about the two witnesses and how they were they were um, dressed in humble apparel. They were dressed in garments of sackcloth, which represent the lowest state that we've been brought to. All right, and the poverty that us being Israelites would have to experience to remind us that we need salvation. All right, so I'm cool with that. All right, I'd rather take my garment when Yahweh Shai gives me my my crown. When the reward comes, that's when I'll take my garment, you know. But yeah, I'll end it off on that. Hopefully, this was edifying. I'm gonna give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakhakwadash. Also, double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do rule well through the Holy Spirit. And peace, blessing, and salutations unto you, elect, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.